Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco, and I'm chuckling because I just cleared my throat and I looked at the screen and I saw Jim had put up, host has unmuted your mic. So y'all heard my uh, heard me clear my throat. Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. Uh, tonight, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about a couple of new knives, uh, uh, a knife news story. Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of um, well, knives new to my collection, something I got for my brother, and I think we're going to see him drop in. Well, I know we are. I'm being coy at this point. And then uh, I want to do my response to Professor EDC's open tag video, which was, what knife defines you most? And to be honest, I still haven't made a decision on that yet. So uh, we will get to that uh, when we get to that. But uh uh, first, one of the big things, hey, Big Boar, good to have you here, sir. Uh, one of the big things, BJ, nice to have you here, sir. What's up, junkies? He says, yes, we are junkies if we gather together on a night like this and just, uh, you know, blather about knives or prevaricate, a word my brother recently used in a sentence uh, seamlessly. And I was like, ah, that, uh, that's a good synonym for bloviate in my case, so I need to start using that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the first thing we're going to do tonight is, uh, well, it's the third Thursday of the month, and what we do on the third Thursday of the month is choose a random winner from our $10 per month uh, tier gentleman junkie Patreon patrons and uh, decide who gets to win the knife. Blade Ogre, how you doing? Uh, good to have you. Blade Ogre just recently joined and became a gentleman junkie. Thank you, sir. And uh, he also had the brilliant idea of doing a uh, Patreon exclusive knife sale video. And that is coming up soon. I do swear. Plains Crafter, good to have you. Happy Thursday night knives. Uh, so um, like I mentioned, it's the gentleman junkies. Those who sign up on Patreon for $10 a month, they, uh, they get the... Uh, they are immediately, or not immediately, automatically entered into a, uh, a contest to win a knife every month. This month, uh, I unboxed it. I boxed it up and realized I had botched the boxing. So I unboxed it so I can show you this again. This is what you will be winning if you win. Uh, it is the Topps Knives iStick, kind of a take on the iPhone, iPod. This is the iStick because it sticks. Hey, Alex, how you doing, sir? Good to have you, as always. Alex at Alex's Knife Box, been putting up some beautiful, beautiful pictures on Instagram, just kind of constantly, man. He's always active. So uh, you want to win this eye stick? This is more than a quarter inch thick, by the by, and uh, it comes in this cool sheath with these uh, sort of in the waistband uh, Super ultra tactical high speed uh, clips, Matthew. Good to have you, uh, and Jim. Great to hear from. Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yep, yep. How's it going, guys? G man, it's going very well. It's going very well. Jim, what do you say? Shall we bring up the wheel of destiny? That is the wheel that determines who the new proud owner of this Tops Knives Eye Stick. And uh, I want to talk a little bit as as we bring this up. I want to talk a little bit about the push dagger. The push dagger, what a cool and unique knife. Definitely a self-defense knife and definitely for uh, those up close uh, moments. You know, you don't want to be out in long range, you know, in a duel with a push dagger. This is, uh, you know, punch them in the chest, get them off you kind of thing. And uh, it's it's kind of neat. There's a lot of lore that goes uh, goes into the push dagger. A lot of people claim that they... Uh, really gained popularity on the riverboats in the Mississippi uh, in the 18th century, or was that 19th century, pre-Civil War. Uh, gamblers had those in their cummerbunds and and produced them on the regular, you know, when their, when their honor was besmirched in a card game. Uh, but apparently, uh, you know, it's very hard to find actual uh, stories or evidence. I have not personally looked into it, but the author of this article, great little article about push daggers, uh, mentioned, that <laughs> mentioned that he could not find anything in the historical record uh, that, that actually lent any credence to the fact that the, that the push dagger grew up on the Mississippi 
uh, riverboat. I, I suspect it grew up a lot earlier than that, because if you look at the, uh, if you look at Indian, ancient Indian weapons, uh, the, uh, what the hell is it called? I know someone out there is yelling at their computer right now. What's up, Joe? Good to have you here, sir. Uh, but it was the gauntlet with the, with the blade, you know, I mean, people have been making push daggers for a long time. Uh, they just kind of have pared it down over the ages to match our current dress. Big boar, more like last defense. Yes, absolutely. It's like so last defense that they are, what, three inches away from you. Yeah, for sure. Ryan, good to have you, sir. If you're that close, then straight to the neck or groin it is with that push dagger. Yes, sir. I agree 100%. So, uh, Ryan, you are in the in the mix here. You are on the wheel. And actually, Ryan, I, I am sorry I missed. Ryan did a live uh, Meet the Maker uh, with uh, the gentleman uh, at, the, at the head of Birdvis uh, Bird Knives yesterday. Definitely check that out. I definitely would love to check that out. He's making fantastically beautiful knives. And as you guys know, Ryan knows his knives and knows his makers. All right. At last, Jim, let's bring up the wheel. Sorry, you brought it up a couple of times in my prevaricating or bloviating has has swept it off the screen. So I made double, 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 positive safe shore uh that uh, these names are all legit uh and they are all ten dollar gentleman junkies so let us roll the wheel spin the wheel spin the wheel yeah that's what it is here we go all right who is going to win the tops eye stick timothy becker sir timothy becker thank you timothy timothy becker has been with us since the very start timothy this eye stick this tops eye stick double-edged push dagger is now yours sir um i will have this in the mail to you most likely tomorrow uh timothy i'm pretty sure i have your address because when you signed up as a gentleman junkie i'm pretty sure i got it from you then uh but thank you so much for supporting the show uh, supporting everything we do, uh, the interview shows, the Wednesday night uh, supplemental shows, uh, Thursday night knives, the videos and all that stuff. It's so very much appreciated. Thank you from me and thank you from Jim. Uh, Timothy Becker, this push dagger is headed out your way, sir. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. All right. Is the musical interlude over, Jim? Is it over? It, oh, oh, hey, okay. So uh, we're back, and uh, there are a couple of other things I want to talk about uh, before we get into life, knife, life news. Uh, I want to do a pocket check. I want to find out what everyone was carrying today, and uh, also I want to tell you what I was carrying. So on this very day, I had my Riot K2 on me. Such an amazing knife. Uh, this is the. I don't. I've never had too many Riots, but this is the one. Uh, that I could never part ways with. I love this, and it is my last remaining Riyadh. Not that there aren't others in the future, but what a spectacular knife this is. Uh, the other Riyadh I had uh, for quite a long time was the Crossroads. That ended up uh, in the hands of just the right person, uh, the Knife Whisperer, our, our resident Riyadh expert and, and, and great lover thereof. Riot Hugger, I guess is what you'd call him. Uh, he ended up with the Crossroads. So today I had the K2. What a beautiful, beautiful Tanto blade. Look at that. Congrats, Timothy. Ah, see, that's Caleb. He's a gracious loser. You know, he lost for once. Uh, that's that's very nice, man. Um, so, uh, yeah, I love that upswept Tanto. And uh, by the way, check out Caleb's uh, Instagram. Man, what a collection that guy has. Holy mackerel. Caleb Townsend. Uh, he's won a couple of things here, and he has a very, very nice collection. So uh, check him out for sure. Uh, in my left pocket, in my little geek pouch, where is it? Here. I have this right here. Uh, it's actually, it, it actually really is handy right now because I'm going to the office every day, and I use my own pen. It's a Fisher Space pen. And then I still have the, the Chisola uh, flashlight uh, but i know you flashlight guys call them torches so i have the i, I have the um what is this called maglite i'm sorry the maglite torch or is the maglite just a flashlight kind of like friday the 13th is a movie it's not a film it's a movie 
is this just a flashlight or is this a torch? Anyway, I had in this today the um, Rough Rider Barlow in smooth white bone. This cost me all of 15 bucks. Thank you to thanks to Chinese labor and uh, Smoky uh, Mountain Knife Works. Um, this is a very, very nice knife. Actually, you see this. Uh, uh, I, I closed it on this finger and pinched a V cut uh, out, out of my finger last night, which was very bloody, pretty painful, but more bloody than painful and uh, got it under control. But it's a very sharp knife, uh, 440, 420, 440 razor sharp steel. This is 440A. Uh, so I had this one on me. It's got the uh, little pen blade in there too. And then thirdly and lastly, uh, the Copus Designs Elvia. Love this thing. Oof. Just drop that in the pocket. And, uh, you know, it's your it's your conflict resolution tool. Oh, <laughs> didn't that sound tough? Uh, but uh, really, it is a it is a pretty would would be a pretty good one if you needed it for that. Um, of course, I just keep it around for cheap thrills. Um, plus, it's cool knowing that I I talked to the gentleman who designed this. And I would like to talk to the gentleman who. Uh, produce this. So, John over at Copus Blade Works, return your emails, sir. Let me know. Uh, so, yeah, had those three on me today, and uh, what a great thing. Spartan Palace. Big Boar had the Spartan Palace on him. That's a cool... Uh, I, I love all Spartans, and I'm getting I'm getting uh, more and more used to their non-Harzy folders. The Brad Zinker Miscreant. Miscreant, A. Eh? That's what you're going to tell the judge. Dave, good to have you here, sir. The Hogue compound out the front. My sun and moon chaparral. That sun and moon chaparral. <coughs> woo, excuse me. It's very cool knife. That's a kind of a classy knife, if you ask me. Compound out the front. Jason, how you doing? Excuse me for all the bodily functions you're experiencing. Spider Go Paramilitary 2 with Wiseman Signet Ring. Oh, that's the... Um, that's the uh, attachment that sort uh, that you put in where the backspacer is that turns it into a karambit kind of, and the se tertiary ter 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 tertiary tertiary tertiary. Jeez, I'm embarrassed. I don't know the knife and I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, Surge Hawk Orbit, man, those Hawk guys. You know, it's just as soon as they get the innovation part down and the design part. I think they have a promising future in knife making. Alex had his XM18 three and a half inch Warncliffe no choil M390, which is, I, I have one too. I love that knife. I had uh, Jared Neve sharpen out the, the chipped tip once I dropped it on the front. Alex, man, did some beautiful things to his. Uh, to his Warncliffe No Choil XM18 three and a half inch. Definitely check out Alex's Knife Box Instagram page. It's awesome. Off Grid Viper, Mark, Off Grid. What do you think? I know some of their knives are made by some people we know, and then some of their knives aren't. And I'm, I'm not so sure. I don't know what to think of them because I've never had anything in hand. I do know that I like some of their designs. Just my boring old bug out and a. This was earlier. Tinker. Ha, just kidding. Love the Tinker. Love Swiss Army knives. And, you know, uh, right now I'm in that uh, I'm in not only am I in a slip joint phase, but I'm in a I'm in a I'm going extra geeky. I'm in a I'm in a camp knife phase. And, uh, you know, what is the modern camp knife if it's not the Swiss Army knife? So I love the Tinker. I don't think it's boring, sir. Joe says Strider SMF. Oh, oh, we got royalty amongst us. On loan from D Tom Knives and Gear. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, I saw that you had posted that today. Uh, very nice. I love the SMF. It's a big knife. You know the the uh, the Striders, the SNG, which I have never actually had or held. I've only had uh, two SMFs. Uh, the SNG on paper seems like it might fit my hand better. Uh, but damn it, if the SMF is not just one of the coolest knives ever, and in the uh, configuration I have, which I got from Zell, uh, with the with the uh, count uh, the CC grip, it's a it's a very nice grip. Uh, Blade Ogre uh, Two Suns One O Seven TS One O Seven. I call my titanium spike since it has no name. 
trying to think of what that was. I th- have a feeling you posted that recently and I saw it, but I don't remember. Gail Bradley, G Man has a Gail Bradley too with the black SD micarta scales. Not SDK micarta. Uh, what's SDK? SDK. Well, someone will let me know. G Man, maybe you'll let me know. Torch in the UK flashlight here. Okay. All right. Okay. So I've, I, I definitely knew that, but last week, or two weeks ago, we were talking about if you weren't collecting knives, what would you be obsessing about? And we got onto flashlights, and I said, is there something else I should be calling it? Excuse me, instead of a flashlight. And uh, I, I got that suggestion, Torch, and I wasn't sure if it was coming from overseas or not, but that that shed some light. Doug says, it's only a torch if you have your <laughs> pinky up while using it. Yes, I concur wholeheartedly, sir. And, and and let me ask you this, is this a torch if I hold up my pinky? Even though we know it's just a little flashlight. It's a little flashlight. The Tony Bowes case sow belly. Uh, oh, 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 oh. So funny you should say that, Blade Ogre. Just this very day, I reached out to Tony Bowes, and hopefully I get to talk to him someday. I don't expect to hear from him until I riddle him with emails, but I would love to talk to Tony Bowes on the podcast and to see that you have his sow belly. Uh, I love that knife in particular. I'm a sucker for the stockman and uh, man, that sow belly is cool. Matthew says today at work, I got to use my truck knife, vine knife, my Bushmaster survival fixed blade, 1095 high carbon steel, man, is it sharp? I keep it greased in the sheath tucked under my seat. Ooh, wait, wait. So, wait, wait. Uh, Bushmaster survival fixed blade. Bushmaster. Why am I? Why am I blanking right now? I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking back of the uh, to a cold steel clip point blade uh, that is no longer. It was like a Sheffield clip point style knife that is no Bushmaster. I think it was called. I'm not sure if that's what you're thinking of. Let me know. I'd be very interested because if you have that, I'd make you an offer. Deadpool Lee says, at work now, have my griptilian and bug out on me. All right. So as we continue, oh, by the way, hey, James, and thank you. Uh, Yeah, actually, there's been something, some issue with some of the platforms with today's podcast. Uh, James is one of the fellows who brought it up to me. Uh, But uh, on some of the platforms, uh, you're hearing a podcast from early August, and uh, we can't figure it out. Jim can't figure it out. It's... uh, it's going out on on all of the uh, you know all the correct feeds. It's going out as podcast one fifty five. We'll figure it out because I know you want to hear that Wednesday supplemental, and I'm going to get it to you. Uh, but it's going to take some time. Trevor Berger, L E X K plus Westy Micarta and Damasteel bolsters. Westinghouse Micarta. How can a man argue with that? Jeez, it's beautiful. All right, so I just want to show you all a cool find. Uh, seems logical. Hey, Bob, first time catching. Hey, welcome to. He- thank you to. Welcome to. What am I trying to say? Welcome, sir. Thank you. It's great to have you. That's what I was trying to say. Picked up a 31 today. 31. Let me know what 31 you're talking about. Are you talking about a Great Eastern Cutlery? Buck Vantage Pro and Sog Ultra XR for today. Very nice. So check this out. I found this uh, amongst my uh, my personal effects. This is another grandpa knife. This was a knife that my grandfather uh, used for many years, as you can see from the main uh, spear point blade, which has been sharpened into almost a almost a hawk bill. Uh, but you see uh, a pen blade, very well used, and then the spay blade, which was also sharpened to a nub. Uh, but also you can see how these. Uh, the, the plastic of the day, and I suspect this is probably a 1950s knife, the plastic of the day at some point was probably left in my grandfather's car or in a toolbox somewhere for a long time, and it just melted. But how cool is this? I mean, it's, a, it's still snappy, and uh, ooh, that hurt. And uh, just a great little find. And the funny thing is, is when I found it, I thought this was a jackknife. I thought it was two blades until I saw the... Uh, the pen blade kind of hiding behind the spay there. So very cool find. Happy, happy to get this. Uh, I don't know. Um, I've done this uh, since I was a kid. I'll dig through my stuff. 
uh, stuff maybe I haven't looked through in a while and, and rediscover things that I love. Uh, seems logical. I always wondered this, but did you ever work in radio? I'm getting major radio DJ vibes. <laughs> no, sir, I did not. And I have not. Uh, sometimes at work, I do voiceover work, but that's 100% because I'm free and available. But no, I have not. Thank you. I will, I will take that as a compliment. Jim, uh, if you've ever listened to the Sunday show or to, yeah, to the Sunday show or the Wednesday show, you hear Jim regularly. Jim's got the radio voice for sure. And uh, he actually has the radio background. And not for nothing, but at work, I produce his podcast, and Jim is a great interviewer. And uh, someday, we're going to throw him in with a knife maker and have him interview a knife maker. No doubt about it. Uh, so I also wanted to mention um, that, uh, well, I got a, a, a cool knife through the Pass Around group, and then and then I'm going to, uh, uh, and I just wanted to show it off. I have not done a video of it yet, but this is the... Uh, this is the Reich knife intra integral Thule, and it is G10, integral G10 knife with spectacular, I mean, not exactly my taste, but spectacularly executed um, inlays here. Uh, beautiful knife, incredible action, nice uh, 3.75 inch blade, very thin, very slicey. Uh, if you're into all of those things, this is definitely your knife. Integral to me that that that's what's interesting. I think it's the first G10 integral production knife, and uh, inexpensive to boot. 154 cm steel, cool knife. Um, you know you can see where the where the uh, liner lock is uh, fastened to the frame. Woo! Excuse me, man. But anyway, I just wanted to show that off. Uh, so there we go. Couple of couple of more things I want to get into life knife life knife news, but uh, I want to show off a knife that I'm I got for my brother for his birthday, and uh, um, I have my brother here with me. I called him up and I was like, "If you don't want to know what you, what I got you from for your birthday, don't show up." Oh, thank you, Alex. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, so I said, uh, Vic, <laughs> don't <laughs> don't show up if you don't want to know what you got. And he said, I'll be there. <laughs> and my birthday was two months ago. Yeah, his birthday was two <laughs> months ago. <laughs> yes, yes, I do have quite a vocabulary. Thank you. Uh, uh, so, Vic, this is what I got you. And actually, uh, I got myself one, too. And that's, you know, that's so this is mine. Yours is still in the tube. Uh, but I got you uh, one of these. A, oh, I know you don't have cool. very very many traditionals. This is a Northfield yeah. unexcelled uh, Great Eastern cutlery, um, but it's special. Why I got this one in particular? I got you the a. Uh, it's called the Oil Field Jack. It's got a nice oh, big cool. clip point blade and a nice big coping blade, or 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 uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, sheep's foot. But the reason I got it, oh is, God, is, is because it's uh, yeah, it matches my glasses. <laughs> yeah, it's tortoise shell, and that is uh, beautiful. Uh, I have a love for tortoise shell, and I think I I got it from you, pretty much. Yeah, and oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, maybe our grandfather also. I think yep. he was a. So this is uh, from I think what year is this? Uh, I think it's a 2017 or 2018. It'll have it uh, 2019 production. It's got uh, big. Ooh, it's got a nice pull. Got a big, beautiful clip point blade. Just God, an all sweet, all American jackknife. It's 1095 steel, so it will either patina, rust, or you got to keep it, uh, you know, nice. Yeah, I, got, I, I love a good patina. That's for I'm, sure. Me too. It's got good walk and talk, and then man, that's an awesome secondary blade. So, uh, well, thank you, Bob. Oh, you're quite welcome. Well. I, I, Thank me when it actually arrives on your doorstep. <laughs> yeah, I heard you talking about the two, the knives that come in tubes on on one of your uh, recent podcasts, and I was like, oh god, that sounds cool. So not only does it I come in, give a, me one of those. <laughs> not only does it come in a tube, it, but, it, with but the with the wax a, paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you get to like an old oh. Smith and Wesson or something. Yeah, yeah. You're unrolling yeah, yeah, awesome. it and like, finding uh, the, the treasure oh, within. Oh, god. 
so I there can't wait to get that dude it's on its way well no it's not it will be tomorrow <laughs> it will be tomorrow i don't know if it makes it out the door because i might need two in case i jack one up <laughs> okay so uh yeah the, oh let me show you something else something else cool and this is uh this is on a different uh different tip so this is this is yours wow, this is this next this next one is not yours uh and it's not mine it's been loaned to me from our good friend ed edwin who is our uh man geez he has got the deepest and widest emerson knives collection out there um you know he's got it all and he's got them in numbers and uh they just came out with this which is their first switchblade oh, cool. it's, called, it's called the bull shark it's the oh bull shark God. it actually looks like a shark with that it, fin coming down the side you know it does it does in the shape of that blade and uh so it's i think it's sort of a proof of concept knife and God it's ca damn. cali legal and they're cali located it's got all the hallmarks of an emerson knife including the uh the, the v ground blade but the chisel edge and 154 cm steel i believe this is probably i don't know <clears throat> but uh i know that when it first came out and actually we talked about it on this show some people pointed out the firing button and how it looks like the emerson or like the uh the kershaw emerson firing button and uh some people speculated uh, that perhaps kershaw was making this and uh you know but then again emerson designed the button so uh man you get this thing in hand and and it's it is definitely all emerson it's got a brute a brutishness uh that uh i don't know kind of kind of speaks to the form and uh it's it is also a fat and big small little knife well bob bob yeah you are late for my birthday technically so that would be good compensation yeah but i cannot this is not mine to give you see this is not mine to give but it's it comes in this i, I don't know if you can see this i don't it's probably not coming through it looks just black anodized yeah. but in certain lights it's almost like a very deep green oh. like a, like a, like a, so deep it's black uh dave says oh the bull shark could be one of those politically correct swears. <laughs> oh, bull shark. Yeah. Like fudge. <laughs> the knife connection has them in stock. The knife connection is where I got these. The knife connection is like the only is the only um one of the few purveyors out there who has even the tiniest selection of GEC knives right now. I don't know what's going on with them. Uh, or, or if demand is just really high and uh, and their output is the same, but uh, it's hard to find right now. Uh, you know, they, they, they come and then they get snapped up so quickly. It's so the wax paper. It is. It's definitely the wax paper. <laughs> All right. So cool. So I want, I want to show a couple of, uh, I want to show a couple of little knife news articles. Uh, just real quick and uh, and get your take on them. But uh, so first we have uh, we have something from Knife Magazine and uh, Knife Magazine has a great news feed. And uh, I go to Knife News a lot for like, all the new knife and knife drops and that kind of thing. Knife Magazine kind of scours the global news for news stories that contain knives <laughs> and uh <laughs> Here's a good one. So uh, uh, the first person to win a um, the first living veteran from the Iraq war to win a Medal of Honor um, uh, told a story about how uh, he was in a in a in a house clearing incident um, operation. I, I don't know what to call it. Please forgive me. I haven't been on one of these things. And uh, and he was caught in a room with someone who attacked him kind of hand to hand and there was no way to uh bring his uh, his uh, his firearm into into uh use so he grabbed his folder which happened to be the gerber fairbairn folder and used it to uh to you know finish this guy so that he could he could help his friends because this guy was calling for other friends to come up there and in any case uh he drew this knife and used it and uh and later on basically sang its praises and he okay. said basically he'd use anything you know it wasn't it wasn't that knife in particular uh it was 
you know, the need to have something to fill that gap. And, uh, and that was what did it. And uh, I've always been curious about that knife in particular because it's a folding version of the Fairbrand Sykes. And, and you, you know, who's not, a, who's not a fan of that? You got me one for my birthday, for God's yeah, sake. Yeah. Um, so kind of a cool little news story, something a little different from just a knife drop. See, so these things uh, actually, actually, it can happen and they actually do play out. And, uh, and man, it seems like that's got to be one of the worst moments ever. Uh, but thank God, uh, thank God that knife was there and he had it on him. Uh, oh, yeah. My wife uh, was saying, you know, one of these days you still have to do your show about movie scenes where a small knife saves the day because we, you know, every time it's like we watch thing, you know, we'll watch something and it's always some guy, you know, creating space with a knife and, and that saves the day. And uh, in this case, uh, that was the case. So next we have from Kershaw, the new launch, the launch 13. Vic, have you seen this? You know launch? No. Do you know the launch series? So, okay, a uh, couple of years back, Kershaw starts a series of knives, USA made automatic knives. This is their Kirch, uh, this is their la launch number nine. It's a teeny tiny. It's pretty cool though. But but so cool. It's a yeah. great little ooh, great little fifth pocket <laughs> knife. Great little way to cut the other finger. <laughs> So uh, they just came out with their 13th in this line of aut USA made automatics. And it's the first Warncliffe in the line. And damn it, is it cool? Look at that <laughs> thing. Sweet, it looks like a claw. Yeah, it does. I mean, it looks like, like an eagle claw or something. Yeah. It looks like an organism of some type yeah. that's really got it in for you. You know, it's, <laughs> it's got the, the breathing holes and you know, it, it's, it's pretty cool. Hey, what's up? It's an addiction. Good to have you here, sir. Uh, what do you think of this? Uh, what do you think of this switchblade? Or I guess we'll call it an automatic so as not to trigger anyone. What do you think of this automatic? <laughs> oh, I'm sure automatic isn't triggering either. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really cool. I love the shape of that blade. The handle is less than neutral, but you know what? That's, that's kind of part of the charm, right? I think the handle is very cool. I'm sure it's cozy. And I think... In it one position, like, I think it's. I think it just. It looks cool, and I. I'm kind of like you, Bob. I'm a sucker for like like looks, you know. <laughs> so you're shallow, just like your little. Just, <laughs> yeah, just, just like hey, my Jim, little brother. Jim, put the put the picture up again, if you would, please. Uh, check out the uh, triangular shaped pivot. I mean, obviously, that's oh, just yeah, the that's the cool. show side, but I like that. I mean, that's like okay. That's like. They're all in on the craziness of the design. So pretty cool. That's a three and a half inch blade, which puts it just at the low end of my wheelhouse. So uh, yes, I would deign to own that <laughs> cool ass knife. I think that's CPM 154, uh, like most of them, right? Is that what this is? This is, uh, yeah, CPM 154. And I'm sure it's got the cool flag blowing in the wind properly in the proper orientation. And uh, yeah, cool. Love it. Love me some Kershaw. And, uh, you know, it's in the launch series. We were just talking launch when we were talking. Boom. That's it too. So cool. Just an excuse to pick it up. And play it. <laughs> Thanks again, Edwin. Two weeks, baby. Two weeks. I'll have this back to you. I swear. I swear. <laughs> just kidding. All right. So uh, I want to talk about. Okay. So Vic. Oh, all right. So do you remember giving me the the uh k bar knife the tdi k bar that yeah. has a pistol grip so it's yeah. up in it's it's a couple current, of five years ago maybe six years no ago. longer than that it must have been yeah <laughs> at maybe least 10 years ago I don't know. it's tucked away in a in a safe right now um but uh i should have grabbed it shoulda woulda coulda but they have a new one it's the the k bar tdi and they're doing something a little bit different with it it is now uh, and and I like I like yeah. half, of, yeah. See, I like half of what they did with it. Okay, it's still it's a, a different. Sorry, Vic. sorry, Bob. You, you finish, and then I'll make my point. Uh, this is, okay, so it's it's. Uh, I I like half of what they did with it. You you know they they kept it small. They changed the shape, and that's fine. They changed yeah. the uh, angle of the handle. 
to the to the um, you know the original idea was it was more of a pistol grip orientation. So you hold it, and right. the the blade is presented in such a way that it's kind of canted like a pistol. Right. This they they kind of seem to have uh, made it more knife like, which is fine, uh, but it kind of takes away from part of what the original concept yeah. was. But I think that was in the service of, and this is the part that I like. <clears throat> This is to be. This is a fixed blade to be worn in the front pocket, uh, with the clip on the sheath, kind of like the clip on a on a folding knife we'd carry today, which is all fine and good. But when you look at it, man, it's riding really high. There's no disguising the fact that you've got some super tactical piece of kit in your pocket. And then the other thing I'm not crazy about is the ring. Now, <clears throat> uh, I. The, Having rings on self-defense knives, uh, it's, a, it's a polarizing topic. Uh, it actually is. And, uh, you know, the karambit school loves it because, you know, you can't disarm a karambit because you got that ring on there. But <clears throat> other schools say that it traps you to have your, uh, you know, you can't, you can't change or switch hands as easily if your finger's through that ring. Yeah. And then I look at this, and the ring looks very just small. Because that whole knife is very small, and then you look at the uh, proportionally, the hole looks like it's going to be too small. Now, I don't mean to be talking out of school here on a product I've never held, but to me, that's kind of a misfire. I like but, the idea of having a front carry pocket, uh, uh, you know, EDC defense knife and all that, but having it ride way up in the pocket and then having a, a ring and then having the ring small kind of seems to work counter. So here, here's my here's my question, Bob. And I, I'm not I'm not the knife junkie, right? But but it seems to me that that is a, just a different animal than the original. Why why can't they make why why would they take the original and change it into that and not just make both? Right? Well, it's it's the designer of the original who came up with this as sort of an improvement on his original concept. Hey, lavender pants, good to have you here, sir. We're in a we're in a pretty deep discussion about the K bar TDI. And, I, uh, I, I'm sorry. I look I at that, that sheet though. Looks stylish and high and tech. Think, yes, I agree with you. It's an addiction. However, um, I'm not sure if there's a picture on this page or if you have to click through to the K bar page, but man, that thing rides way up. It's like, Hey, what do you got in your front pocket? What is that interesting system? It looks like a, a system. It's not just like a, but I think it was originally designed for cops. Yeah. We're the old okay. TDI. Yeah, right. that, it was like a, a, a weapons okay, retention getting, knife, which I'm, is... Right, a, exactly, and I'm probably getting stuck on, on that point, okay? But I think that is cool, right? Mm -hmm. In its own right, not as a successor to something else. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 I got you. And, That's and the I'm last not, I will say about it. Oh, boy, he rests his case. No, well, I'm not resting my case. I'm just saying I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. God damn because it. I You're always making a big deal out of these things. <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm not. I think it's, just kidding. I think it's cool. I think it looks even cooler in that picture than in I, the original picture. I would tend to agree with you. I still but, think. But I just don't think it's something I would carry. I still think that that knife would have to be bigger than it actually is to have that hole be serviceable have effect right especially with that extra little like notch like, yes point on the and especially with the squashed aspect of it and then thirdly especially with the with the gross motor movement adrenaline flood you're gonna have if you actually yeah. need to use it max says so max the soldier would wear it upside point. down right on his chest reverse draw in my opinion yes yeah that's a, yeah, that's or, a or, good point but 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 he's not gonna care that it's it's going to be obvious, right? For well, and for, and forget using gloves with that little tiny ring. Am I right? Like half the time, uh, the the uh, karambit rings are 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 big so that you can get your your thumbed finger through it. Wait, is replacing now? Hey, Matthew, good to have you here, sir. I don't think it's replacing the TDI. I think it's just the next evolution. Okay, I, uh, so that's the, that's my bad. I well, not so only that, me but me harping on that point. So, uh, okay, so Hinderer did his version of the T. I mean, the TDI is like a whole line of knives. I don't think they're going to get rid of them. And uh, Rick Hinderer uh, did his own version. It's cool. It's got it's like a recurved tanto, but on that same sort of orientation. I have a I have a feeling that's not going anywhere. People, calm down, people. <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> you're the one who started this. I think it's a cool knife. I think it's cool. All right. 
fine. We'll talk about this. I, I I do. I just I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't <laughs> talk about it off. <laughs> I just wouldn't wear it in public. No, 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 no. Me neither. You I mean, know what I'm saying. Well, uh, to me, it's doing the same thing this is doing, but a lot less discreetly. You know, this is a uh, yes, yeah. agreed. It's totally different. Than, yeah. I th but yeah. I think it's it, TDI stands for something. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> Anyway, so <laughs> let's make something up. And yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tactical decision intent. <laughs> All right. So new multi-tool from Boker, and then and then we're out of life knife news. But I wanted to bring this up because man, this is this is my this is my line of thinking these days. I'm I'm into these uh and, and that's for this week and next week and last week, and it will change. We know that's how this works. Uh, but I'm into these right now. These camp knives, uh, like that grandpa gave me here, or this is a new one. This is the new version of the Camp King, which has been an imperial design. This is an old Camp King from my grandfather from the 60s. And they've been making this knife since the, the 30s, I think. And uh, it's had a number of different iterations. Well, you know, the Swiss Army knife is kind of the modern day version of these uh, old Boy Scout or camp knives. And uh, I, so right now I have a special appreciation for them. I just think they're kind of cool. I, uh, they're the unsung heroes. Uh, I guess they're pretty sung. But uh, to me, they're the unsung heroes because these are generally what I think of when I think of knife. I think of something, uh, you know, a little less Swiss Army knife and a little more, you know, menacing. So uh, back, uh, Boker, who, by the way, this is a Boker. This ancient old uh, stockman I showed you uh, is an old poker. So they, this is from the 30s, must be. Well, you know what? I don't know when this is from. 50s, I think. <laughs> 50s, 1850s, no doubt. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> so Boker, Boker now has a new knife coming out, and it's kind of reminiscent of the Mercator knives, uh, you know, those German cat knives. But it's a slip joint, and it's a very thin folded steel frame uh with a with a slip joint you know simple slip joint spring on the top you can either get it just a plain blade or you can get it with the scissors and i gotta say man i i think that this is really cool because i love swiss army knife scissors i love uh leatherman little little scissors and i have no doubt that boker will execute the scissors well that's what's exciting to me man i i love the scissors on the swiss army knife so here it is, you know, as the second blade in a in a new jackknife, basically. I think that's cool. It is. You know, uh, these uh, other jackknives like the Barlows and stuff that we get used to, or a um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a uh, um, oh, with the spade blade, uh, a trapper. It's a it's a you know you got two blades coming out of the same side, same pivot. And uh, uh, we're used to that. But to have one of those be a pair of scissors, I'm smitten. I love it. <laughs> I'd like that in like an, an electrician knife. So uh, for uh, just Greg has a great uh, selection of, not selection, collection, is it? Of, uh, of, uh, of slip joints if you check out his Instagram page. And uh, this is what he's talking about, an electrician's knife. Jim, what was that last comment he had up? Give it a flathead bottle opener. Yep, yep. Yeah. That's all this needs, a little bottle opener, you know, to this uh, screwdriver and and uh, and wire scraper. What's the size on the new Boker? I really like their scissors on the tech tool. Ooh, I don't know. Jim, can you pull that up? Let's take a look. I think it, I think the blade is uh, a three inch blade. Um, oh, I'm, I'm scrolling on it as if it's real. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's see. So, oh well, it's a svelte three point one seven ounces. Um, hmm. I thought I remembered reading it was a it was a three inch blade. Uh, anyway, it's oh, called the Atlas, and and. Uh, and Benjamin here at uh, Knife News, Benjamin Schwartz, awesome writer, by the way. Uh, but he likens it to the French Duc Duc knife, also a traditional uh, folding knife with the with the uh, folded over steel 
you know, flat steel frame, uh, light, cheap to make, and uh, eh, just pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, Atlas Multi-Tool from Boker. I think it's kind of neat. It's kind of in line with, with my thinking these days of, uh, of those kind of knives. So, uh, yeah, check it out. So now that uh, now that we are talking about those kind of knives, the the camp knives, the the folding sort of tool knives, I, I just wanted to show really quickly. Uh, it said, "Oh, two point six four. Thank you, Greg. Uh, just Greg says two point six four inches on the blade of the Boker Atlas. Two point six four. So that's that's pretty small." You know, you look at the picture, it's kind of hard to tell without something else. What kind of a weird channel did I just land on? Looks like a bunch of knife weirdos. <laughs> yeah, man. We're in deep. We're in very deep right now, actually. So, so as I was mentioning, I'm into these camp knives, right? I'm into these camp knives, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, touch... To I'm sorry, I've, people. I, I have to apologize. That uh, I have to take some responsibility for him. <laughs> yes, ahead, yes, you do. Uh, started with my so wait. Lavender Pants was saying he stripped many wires with the with the with the scissors of a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, I've done a uh, lot of yeah, things with like those stick scissors. Stick it in the V. Yeah, stick it in the V. So uh, it started with, <laughs> with this old one that my grandfather gave me. <laughs> That's what she said. That's yeah. So uh, I wanted to I wanted to talk about this real quick, and may maybe this is only exciting to me, and maybe someone else that I didn't contact to watch this. <laughs> but but this is an old Camp King with a K. So Camp King, this is an old Imperial. Uh, the Camp King was an imperial knife for, uh, I don't know, 50 to 70 years. This was my grandfather's. And I, I think it's from the 60s. From what I've seen in doing a little bit of YouTube research, Tobias Gibson, uh, I, I love his videos. He does all of these videos on traditional knives. I don't know if he's a guitarist and loves Tobias and Gibson's or if that's his actual name, but he's awesome. Check out Tobias Gibson. He talks about the Camp King knives. And uh, I think from what he says, this is probably from the 50s. But I love seeing all the, you know, my grandfather obviously uh, sharpened that knife. And uh, my grandfather sharpened knives like one sharpens a chisel. You know, kind of in that circular fashion on the stone. And you can kind of see some of the marks on that blade. So I was examining this not too long ago, and I was thinking, wow, they really made these cheaply. This is not a scale uh, pinned to a frame with independent bolsters. This is all one piece, and this is called a shell knife. Hmm. Yeah, so that's all a metal shell, and then there are different ways. I'm not exactly sure what they do to color this black and such, um, I think in some things I've seen, it's like actually a layer of something on it. Not like paint, but more like paper or like some sort of plastic thing layered onto it. Yeah. And uh, it's got this free hanging removable uh, bale here. And so, at first, it, yeah. So Bob, is, are those like, is is like, is that stamped sheet metal or is that yes, like? Yes, yes. These, on these two, you know, the, 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 um, let's see. Um, like if you look here, that yeah. is, uh, that is a, a, uh, a brass yeah. liner yep. with, with that and the metal bolsters, a sil yep. nickel silver. And, you know, so here, this is all, everything that's happening above the liner is one piece. Okay. So it's not like, uh, okay, and it's it not kind like of milled out. Yeah. And it's, out. and it's not epoxied and pinned on to the frame. It's like snapped on knife chats with tobias is where i get a ton of traditional knife. he's awesome i like that dude Vic, you should check him out actually yeah hey what's up ray good to see you sir uh i'm very excited uh well uh i'm, I'm gonna be talking to ray on his show some uh soon and uh that'll be awesome ray's an awesome guy doing great great podcasts and videos and uh man he's got a winning winning personality for sure and, uh, and away with his guests. So I look forward to being one of your guests, sir. Um, so so this being early and uh, and now, 
the design has been sold to Rough Rider, and they are now doing it in the traditional sense where you have bone, uh, jigged bone ah. covers, and you have Ooh. nickel silver bolsters. And uh, um, oh, my pleasure, sir. And you have <laughs> and you have the brass liners. There's the radio voice. <laughs> that, but hey. check this out, Vic. Look at this. Look at how much thicker this damn thing is. That's beautiful, though, isn't it? it it's beautiful. It looks solid, too. My God. Well, yeah, it is solid. I mean, you take a bunch of metal and you press it together, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But there is some gapping. Like, I can see daylight through the through the center, and I feel like when I first got it, you couldn't. So I think working the springs and the blade has kind of loosened it up a little bit. You can see some of the gapping yeah. there. Whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a rough rider. It, didn't, it cost 17 bucks. But the point is, the Camp King brand was was uh goes way way back went through all these different kinds of manufacturing processes to get it cheaper and easier to produce and uh and then finally uh imperial i don't know i guess they gave up the ghost and eventually uh rough rider bought the brand camp king and uh started producing it again and these things are fun man I, I, if to to all you knife collectors out there who who are kind of into the 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 cool modern stuff and believe me i mean this stuff is awesome i i believe that 100 percent. but they all come from somewhere and these old knives they really are very pleasing to have and i think that i think the uh oh oh ray what are you doing stop thank you sir i appreciate that <laughs> Woo! drinks on me <laughs> Thank you, Ray. I appreciate that, man. Um, but I think with the with the uh, traditional knives, one of the things is blade shape, finding out what blade shape you like. But mostly it's cover design. You know, like what, what cover material do you like? I love this uh, uh, tortoiseshell. I got that from my brother. Some people love the different kind of woods. I love bone. I love, uh, I love these kind of like jigged bone patterns. And uh, so, you know, go out there, get yourself a traditional. What can I say? Vic, you got your first, or at least your first modern fancy. Yeah. So, so it's beautiful, Bob. I can't wait to get it. You know, Great Eastern Cutlery. You've heard the show. You know them. Mm -hmm. All right. Pennsylvania, Bradford, I think, or no, that's where Case is. They're in Pennsylvania and uh, produce all of these knives on old, hundred year old machines. Oh, that's so cool. And uh, we've had we've had conversations here, kind of ad nauseum, about like if they if they if they modernize to step up their production, it might you know, it might spoil the goodness <laughs> in a way. Yeah, Gert says I the really magic. like those broad spear point blades. Yes, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. And uh, uh, Gert, uh, uh, he doesn't post too much anymore, but there's a guy Randy Johnson on uh, YouTube, Johnson's Knives. And he's got a nice little collection of GECs. He has a couple of rare ones, and he has a lockback ah, seventy something, I think. Uh, but it's got that that broad. It's almost like a teardrop shaped uh, spear point blade. It is beautiful. On uh, new machines, wait, wait, okay, wait. I lost this. Uh, they, yeah, they won't, won't be, be the, the same, same on new machines. He's right. He's right. Yeah, yeah. So. So the, the age old question, or at least the question we've been asking here for a couple of weeks is how do you, how do you grow in that situation? You got to train people who really care and who are going to put in the time to stay with the company for a while to work all that old stuff. How do well, you compete, man? That's or, a, that's a maybe, tough road to hoe. Maybe you have two lines, right? You've got the traditional line and you've got the newer kind of more modern line. You got the Fazul line for the Mama Lukes. <laughs> who don't exactly. want to lay down? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Wish the Northwoods would come back. Joe, I hear you, man. I don't have any Northwoods. You know who's got a beautiful collection of Northwoods is this man right here, Edwin. <clears throat> Edwin, I loved your recent video with your Northwoods knives. Now, Vic, uh, Northwoods knives was an old label. Uh, that went defunct, and then Derek Bone, may he rest in peace. He was the guy uh, who uh, who started and ran Knives Ship Free, who really went it did a lot to to buoy up uh, a lot of uh, USA makers. Um, Great Eastern, or, yeah, Great Eastern Cutlery being one of them. Anyway, he resuscitated the Northwoods brand, brought back some of the old designs, and then had. Cool. 
Great Eastern Cutlery designed them, or not designed them, manufactured Manufacture. them. God, they're beautiful, and they're they're way harder to get. And you know, now they're now they're all, you know, very expensive because they're all old. <laughs> you know, they're not making them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> i'm late to everything <laughs> first time live great to have you here 86 Recon. uh i'm just saying yeah it's like i, I i'm always it's like in uh, revenge of the nerds when they're getting high and one of them is like would you rather be <laughs> at, at the at the empire in the ascendancy or the descendancy <laughs> i'm like i'm always at the descendancy part of the empire <clears throat> hey what's up uh so i'm gonna have uh well I, I shouldn't say I shouldn't say this, but uh, hello, good to have you here, sir. Um, <laughs> I cannot wait to talk to you about your knives, uh, Birdvis knives, Vic. If you don't know Birdvis knives, we're we're talking about GEC. You got to check out this guy, Birdvis, uh, Birdvis knives. Um, I'm I sorry, man, so. I forgot your actual name. That's not your name. Um, but sitting here, I'm now spacing it because uh, <laughs> say it because <laughs> I'm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, we're going to interview, I'm going to interview him next Monday and he'll be out sometime in the following week. Well, on the Sunday of that following week. And I can't wait to talk to him and uh, see some of his things a little bit more up close. Uh, I've only seen his knives, Nick, Nick, of course. Sorry, man. Um, Nick, I've only make seen sure his... he remembers that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next time you're talking. Nick, like Vic. <laughs> uh, so, uh, only seen his pictures on Instagram, and then um, our good friend Ryan, uh, we all know him as Spirited Blades, has shown some of his stuff off um, up close. And, oh, Jared Neve has been doing these awesome videos with Ryan. Uh, they, they both live in the same uh, area of the world. They've been getting together, kind of uh, showing off and swapping knives, and uh, they've been doing great videos together. I, I love those videos. But, yeah, uh, the first... I, I, the first friend I have with a bird vis that I've never met in person uh, is Ryan. So very much looking forward to that. And by the way, sir, I love your shield. Uh, his not Vic, definitely check him out. His knives have a have a uh, have a mid century modern feel to them. You oh, know, in, in cool. a way, yeah, in a way, yeah. in a way. Yeah. And and sorry, Nick, if I'm if I'm pigeonholing you or if you think that's totally inaccurate, but at least that is is enough to, that i think my brother would understand why i think it might appeal to him yeah <clears throat> if you'll excuse me so uh uh vic any new knives for you recently sir um just the ones that you've sent me i haven't, <laughs> I haven't bought any new ones yeah. myself uh actually i i okay the, I, I at the beginning of the year, just before like COVID and stuff, I got the I got a couple of cold steels. I got the the two um, uh, Chris, yeah, the two Chris folders, and I got the, that um, not the Copus, but the um, Roman Legion Air. What um, mm, the uh, I'm uh, totally drawing a blank right now. Um, you know, what I'm talking about it's a the. Uh, are you it's talking based about on the, a gla it's like a folding gladius the immortal yes the immortal the that immortal thing is cool um uh yeah those are the ones that i've gotten for myself this year um but nothing recently have you seen any of the have you seen okay two new knives out from cold steel that have recently caught my attention ryan sent me down the custom rabbit hole it's been bad for me <laughs> lavender pants yeah <laughs> So, uh, uh, yeah, I've been noticing that. So, uh, let me know if you want to give me any screaming <laughs> deals on your run of the mill stuff. Yeah, you <laughs> I'll be happy to help you out. <laughs> um, where was I? Uh, hmm. I'm sure I was somewhere. Just, uh, oh, I new new things we've got. Yes. Uh, uh, well, the, uh, we were talking with the immortal. The immortal. Oh, the two new knives from Cold Steel. Sorry, <clears throat> uh, oh, yeah, the yeah, two yeah. new knives from Cold Steel. They have the Facon, F A C O N, which is what the uh, which is what the Chilean gauchos carry. It looks like a giant chef's knife, but robustly built for everything from uh, you know breaking down buffalo 
to uh, you know, <laughs> chopping up vegetables for your stew to vanquishing your foe, you know, in a in an early morning duel. It is such a yep. cool knife. And you know, cold steel, I, they made it, I think 1090 steel. They couldn't quite take it up to 1095, so they made it in 1090. Uh, but uh, it's a high carbon steel. It looks awesome. Of course, I'm being facetious there. Uh, I should have mentioned. <laughs> yes, you should have. No, I'm glad you didn't. Uh, but they also have uh, they also have a new um, sax out, the Chieftain oh, Sax. Yeah, and to yeah. me, man, oh god, I love the sax. I love, love, love the sax. So, uh, Vic, before we wrap tonight, you know, here's the main the main thing I wanted to talk about, and and I know it took me a long time to get here, and I don't have much to say about it. But the question oh was... I wish you the, had given me some warning. The question was, what knife defines you the most? Now, this is oh, um, this is yeah. uh, by by one of our, our good friends, Professor EDC. He's been on this show a couple of times. He's got an awesome YouTube channel, Instagram, etc. And he's, uh, you know, he's just another... I, that's, a, that's a great thing. Hang on, I'm bloviating. Yeah, that's, okay, another, yeah. that's another thing about this, about this knife thing that is so awesome, is that there are people from all over the place. And actually, I'm not sure where he's from. Brazil, maybe? Uh, but people from all over the place who love knives, who different walks of life and everything. And um, anyway, so he put out a tag video that a lot of people have uh, put their videos out on. And I, I have not yet. So I wanted to address it right here. And it was, what knife defines you the most? And of course, you know, I've been thinking about this ever since it went out. And I've been going back and forth between, well, you know, I am like in my mind, it's this, you know, cause, <laughs> because it's this and then, oh, well, and then, you know, kind of, kind of going through, oh, but I love to feed my family. Maybe it's this, <laughs> uh, you know, or <laughs> this or that. Thanks, Vic. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Vic. I send my super chat money to you. <laughs> and okay, uh, and but of course, and then I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's like this uh, CRM uh, uh, TRM Adam, you know, because I inter I have you know interviewed Marianne a number of times and had her on the show, and she's so cool, and it's all about that. That's what the knife thing is about. It's about cool people, great community, great product, this and that. And no matter <laughs> no matter how hard I try, what I keep coming back to is this is this grandpa knife. I'm like, yeah, but this is what defines me the most because of all of these cool ass knives I have. If I lost this, I would be the most heartbroken, you know. So to me, it's got to be. Uh, I, I have to fall back on the sentimental answer, you know. Yeah. And I would say this this defines me most. Well. You know, I um, you uh, you sprung that question on me here. I think I saw it when I when I dialed in before, and I was thinking about that, but I didn't think you were going to ask me. Um, and but I went through a similar kind of thing, and I don't have examples here necessarily. But like, I was thinking like the Chris's. I've always loved the Chris ever since you know we were kids. I actually have one up on my wall, but I I can't get it down. But um, you know, because I've never been like on a straight path, you know, and okay. Uh, I like the uh, kukris because, you know, they're kind of- They're crooked. Crooked, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but as I'm sitting here, honestly, I think the knife that defines me most is the simple exacto knife. We got a philosopher, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. <laughs> uh, because it was within arm's reach. <laughs> and, and I didn't well, wanna... uh, okay. Allow allow me to explain then. Uh, allow me to explain. Uh, my brother, ever since uh, we were tiny, tiny, tiny kids, has been one of the handiest people I know. Not only just in like solving problems around you in life but also in building and building cool stuff you know i've shown off my war gauntlet made of leather but he's made he's made hundreds and hundreds of really cool intricate yeah. little dioramas and all sorts of shit and not i say shit that's talent <laughs> that's okay. all sorts of really really outstandingly cool stuff and very precise 
Like my mother, Victor is a very fastidious person. And the X-Acto knife actually totally makes sense. Totally yeah. makes sense. I got I got a couple here. And now I'm going to bore everyone with my X-Acto knife. Show us knife your X-Acto knives. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah I, I think I think one. what defines me most is the ventilator knife I made from a big pen <laughs> in a in a in a Check rest stop out. bathroom. Well, this is this is a scalpel that Dad Ooh. got me. Oh, that's. I mean, cool. the, it's a new blade, but the the handle, Jesus, so is like thirty years old. Is the sharp part on the inside of the hook or the outside of the hook? It's on it's on the inside, right here. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, right <Ooh>. here. <laughs> but this but this one is really dull. So wait, I, let me I'm let me. Let me tell you all something. Uh, the Koenig Arius is the knife that defines me most. Because, Max, you're a classy guy, and we have never met. But, man, that is a cool knife. And, uh, hey, uh, Max, not sure if, if you were listening at the time, but uh, uh, I interviewed TJ Schwartz, and he talks about uh, the process of designing that knife. So it might be interesting if that's the one that, that defines you the most uh, for you to check that out. Uh, Ooh, David E. Spiderco para Paramilitary, too. Those are sweet. Yeah, yeah. They are indeed. Man, I had something on the tip of my tongue, and wouldn't you know, uh, Gert, I really like my little open L number five, such a thin blade that works brilliantly as a craft knife. Vic, do you have any open Ls? You got some open Ls, yeah. right? Yeah. I have the one you got me, and it's upstairs, actually. Actually, I do have, a, I have other knives. Hold on a second. Ladies and gentlemen, did you hear that? A DeMarco has more knives. <laughs> So uh, I I did not come up with a uh, with a knife fight topic for the evening. Um, I'm feeling like uh, like we better come up with one because it could be epic between the two of us. Uh, sorry, Jim, can you go back to Max for a sec? Hey, but uh, thanks. Hold on. Okay, there was something. Professor Easy, hey everyone. Sorry, I'm late. Professor EDC, great to have you here. We were talking about uh, your open tag video, uh, knives that define you the most. Max said the Koenig Aris, Arius defines him the most. My brother uh, said the Exacto knife defines him the most. I said uh, this knife that I've had from my grandfather, my very first knife, defines me most because I'm sentimental and I, I, I would. I would really be heartbroken if I lost this. The Cold Steel Colossus is an ogre-looking knife. Yes, yes, sir. The Colossus. Victor. Yes. What do you have? Oh, um, I, I had this hanging Ooh. on a shelf. It's a uh, it's a bayonet for an M1 carbine, and um, it's got stacked leather handle. Beautiful. And I, it's not. It's like. It, it's original, but it's not like an original U.S. military. It's like it was, you know, like it was like Swedish or some country like Denmark or Norway. What, is where, there is there a Tang stamp on it? There is, but um, it's going to be it's extremely difficult to see, and and even like live when you see it, it's it's difficult to kind of decipher what what it is. But I think it's like Danish or Norwegian or something like that. That's pretty cool. Love stacked leather handles. Man. Yeah, me too. And and it's in, it's in. I mean, it it's it's completely mint except for like the marks where I've like taken it in and out of the of the uh, um, scabbard. But that's so, a pretty cool. One. You know, this say, is what's that. I said I, it would, I wouldn't say it defines me, but it was nearby. So I just said, oh, wait, there's another one I have nearby. <laughs> the question wasn't what knives are close. <laughs> Check this one out. Oh, this, this one's like, nearby. <laughs> yeah, this one's nearby. It's a it's a uh, World War One, I, I believe. British Enfield band. So. Man, they made them long. See, check this out, Vic. We're 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 look. Think of all the people we're taking away from the town halls tonight. Uh, lavender yes, pads. The Adam. <laughs> I'm not the best. At, uh, I'm not the best at anything, but I'm really good at tons of things. I feel like I can be different personas in different roles and turn them on and off quickly, like scale change. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. That's, that's cool. interesting. Yeah. Vic, uh, if, if if you're not exactly sure what he's talking about, the TRM knives, mm -hmm. uh, this is the Adam, uh, you know, the, they're very yeah. easy to swap the scales, and that's part of their, their yeah. USP. 
And uh, <laughs> I've been I've been haunting their website recently because I want new new scales. And every time I'm like, that's not quite the right scale. So I'll, I'll find <laughs> one eventually. So Vic, uh, we're we're about out of time here, but I do want to do <clears throat> fixed blades versus folders for the knife fight. If you haven't done that already, we have. But man, why why not why not do that right now, Vic? You want to do uh, fixed blades versus folders. This is a knife fight. We have a minute and a half each. And uh, you have to defend either. Which one do you feel more strongly about? I think I think fixed blades. So then you'll be doing folders. And I'll do Okay, folders. so so what what are we <laughs> what are we doing? So this is a uh, you have to argue the merits of the folder and I have to merit Over over the, a fixed blade? The, yeah. Yes. But yes. you're you're the knife junkie. Huh? Okay. Do I go first? Yeah, well whenever I do it, it's you I usually lose and in embarrassing ways. And since you're a trained expert, I'm sure I'll do it again. <laughs> so <laughs> let's well, I think there's no question that the folder, All right, are, are you starting? I, is, I, I don't know, am I? Uh, is, this, uh, is this how we're going to do it or what? Okay. How does this work? Go. <laughs> I think there's no question that the folder is a superior knife, okay? Because, because first of all, you can take it more places. It, fol it folds up into a more convenient package, so you can put it, you know, you can put it in your pocket if you need to. You don't need a special sheath like i had to make this ridiculous like 24 inch sheath for this thing um and you can take it to places where you might need it but not be able to snipe um it is easily accessible to to younger people to children um to to women other people that need them um if you need to deploy it quickly you could get a wave and you can deploy just as quickly as as a fixed blade um, and the reality of the situation is that in 99% of the, of the scenarios, most people need knives. All they need is a folder. And if, and if their only choice is a fixed blade, they're not going to take this, you know, into an airport or something, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't think I need any more time. Okay. That's what you think. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for humoring my <laughs> <laughs> my brother. No, no, really, really. I, I, I. Uh, no one can argue with the with the utility, the sort of pedestrian utility of a folding knife. Yes, of course, you can put it into a small. Yes, of course, it's lighter, and yes, of course, you can. You know, it's easier to smuggle into a courthouse. But I mean, is that really your goal? Um, <laughs> well, let's back up. What do you have a knife for? Uh, do you have a knife for cutting and for uh, light prying and for uh, the other kind of tasks you you know you come up against uh, on your in your daily uh, routine, or is your daily routine just like uh, going from social media platform to social media platform, taking pictures of your knives? Uh, trying to impress people with your, you know, uh, with what you've got. Uh, and that, to me, is the main use of a folder, uh, because you can find a fixed blade knife that isn't going to be compromised at that moving pivot point, uh, that will fit in your pocket, that will fit in your bag, that will easily fit on your person without having to <clears throat> endanger your fingers and, you know, basically signal to the rest of the world your status. And that's what I think uh, most people are going for with the folding knife. Therefore, uh, the fixed blade is quite clearly uh, the choice for the serious knife user and not the knife poser. Okay, so Bob? Yeah. What knife defines you the most? It happens to be a folder. However, okay. <laughs> done. It's it's old. Hey, well that's hey. personal. Uh, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm just talking oh. strictly logical. <laughs> well, Victor, it's uh, I appreciate uh, you going out on this journey with me. Because <laughs> aren't aren't we all on journeys? I'm on my journey. <laughs> Glad to see so many participating in the wonderful stories like your grandfather's knife. The stories are what matters and getting to know each other through our blades. Now, 
go to Professor EDC's channel on YouTube. He's got a playlist of all of of everyone's reactions, everyone's uh, uh, tag uh, uh, responses to his video, uh, What Knife Defines You the Most. And it's really cool to see just the variety. And, and not only the variety, but what people, you know, what goes into it. Everyone, you know, I, I, I love this as much as the next guy, but it's not my choice. This might be the next guy's choice for an equally, uh, you know, um, well, deep reason to him or her. So definitely go to Professor EDC's channel. Check him out. He's a great guy also. Uh, Gert says, for anything where you really need a knife to do serious work, there's nothing better than... Thank you, Gert. I, you rest my case. Uh, fixed blade with a proper hand filling and sturdy construction. Folders are fine for light. Right, exactly. Light tasks like taking pictures. <laughs> of course, I'm joking. I love my folders. I love my <laughs> folders dearly, of course. So, uh, well, what do you say, Vito? What do you got coming up this week? Well, Anything for good? Me on, Bob. Oh, man. it's uh... Well, of course, it's been my pleasure. We got anything coming in? Any new I, knives? I don't know what we're doing. Well, no, I, I haven't. I haven't been on any kind of buying binge in a while. So, well, except for the uh, awesome knife that you're getting me for my birthday. Oh yes, yes. So just so you get Go one ahead. last look at it, it's got the cloud shield. How cool! I love the cloud shield. Beautiful. I love their um, tortoise shell. So nicely done. And then, man, nice pull. Great walk and talk on this knife. And I love how their clip point blades are just slightly recurved. And I I believe, and I this is based on zero, except my own personal uh, uh, gut feeling, I have a feeling that recurve is there, not necessarily for the added cutting power, which can't hurt, but I when you sharpen knives, you tend to, you tend to if you're like me anyway, you tend to get the most right about here and so if you're sharpening through this over time that will straighten out and it won't be such a recurve but anyway i love that knife Vito. yours is coming your way it's cool the number yeah. number awesome. 80, 86 <laughs> all right all right well anyway so victor thanks for coming in and joining us and, uh, oh, as Lavender Pants says, everyone go to Big Board Knife and Gear and get in on the auction and raffle. It's for a good cause ends Monday. Uh, what is the good cause? Let me know uh, as we're wrapping up uh, so we can all get in on that. That's another cool thing about this, Vic. Uh, people really like each other here, and there's a lot of trust in the knife world, and people hook each other up, and you'll see sometimes, you know, uh, people fall on hard times, and and the community does what it can to help pick them up. It's pretty cool. So uh, we'll see what that is. Awesome. Uh, but anyway, go to Big Boar Knife and Gear and check out uh, check out the good cause there. Get involved in that raffle, as our good uh, friend Lavender Pants suggested. And I'd like to thank Jim, as always, working his magic behind the switcher, making everything look cool and smooth, like a CNN, Fox News, MSNBC TV show. Except we're talking about cool <laughs> stuff. Not all that <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> and uh, so thank you, Jim. And of course, my brother, uh, raising money for a therapeutic edge. Go to his GoFundMe page for reasons behind it. Okay. Ah, therapeutic edge, Pete. Um, all right. We're going to go check that out. Uh, he's a good man, uh, therapeutic edge, and he's a good friend of this show. So definitely, uh, uh, definitely go check out his GoFundMe page. Find out what's up and see how you can help him. <clears throat> And uh, also Big Boar Knife and Gear. Jim, one last comment. Get that last one up, if you don't mind, before I sign off. I just want to say uh, the one I have on me is always the best. Perfect way to end this. Yes. If you can't be with the one you love, love the one you have. <laughs> so for Jim behind the switcher, my brother Vito, uh, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer. <laughs>